Welcome everybody, I'm Tomek and today I would like to talk about true uh, effort reusability. So probably, if I, I want to say something beforehand, probably you've noticed that I'm Polish, but I'm not giving this talk in Polish. There are two reasons to do it, because first, I already did this presentation somewhere else in English, so I had it prepared. And second thing is that I haven't done any presentation in Polish in 10 years. So you probably would prefer me speaking English rather than Polish. Okay, so uh, when I started to use Flutter, I want to, wanted to talk about how amazing Flutter is regarding the code reusability. So that's why I intended to do this talk. Um, after a while, I noticed that I don't only reuse code uh, while uh, using Flutter. I reuse plenty of other things. So that's why I've changed the title of my presentation to True Effort Reusability. Still, I will, in the beginning, talk about code reusability. Since we started to uh, learn about programming, we've been told to reuse as much code as possible because it will make us better developers and we will be able to like, do our work faster. But this is easier said than done. So you need to have a good practices to make a reusable code. And one of the key points is to make your code solid. And I don't only mean like solid as it doesn't crash and works as intended. I mean, it should follow the solid principles. Anybody know solid principles here? Okay, good. So uh, there are really useful uh, principles to make your code much better, uh, but unfortunately we don't have time to talk about all of those. So let's focus on one, in my opinion, the most important. This is an open close principle. It says that your code should be open for extension and close for modification. So it means that when you write a new feature, a new, bank, a new, uh, new code, and you release it, when a new feature is coming that, uh, that you might need to change your existing code to implement it, don't do it. Rather, implement this new feature as an extension. It's more invo it might involve more work for you, but it's better. And this is because if you, for the first time, decide, okay, like adding a bit of code here won't hurt me, right? So you might do it again and again and again, and uh, in the end, you will end up with a big chunk of code, which is basically not maintainable, because the bigger it gets, the harder it is to maintain. So uh, open close principle is pretty important. So how do we apply, uh, how we can implement this open close principle? There are two approaches. There is inheritance that you already probably know from object-oriented programming, so I won't focus on that. And there is composition. Composition comes from functional programming. And uh, to create a composable code, you create it from small chunks of code that in the end create a big feature. So, let me repeat that. In my opinion, the uh, reusable code is a code that is composable and created from small chunks. And this is, in my opinion, flat. Uh, and let me show you why. In Flutter, we say that everything is a widget. A widget is, in Flutter, something like a blueprint in building construction. And bl blueprints are pretty important. If we wouldn't have blueprints, imagine this situation. You have already built a building, and somebody comes and asks you, hey, how about adding additional floor and put it between first and second? Like, if you would tell it to anybody, they would think you're crazy. But if somebody would say, could you add uh, a, an additional floor uh, on the blueprint, yeah, that doesn't sound so crazy. 
And uh, this is because modifying blueprints and widgets is really fast. Unfortunately, uh, there is a small caveat to it. Not everything in Flutter is widget. There are elements and there are render objects. But let's say almost everything in Flutter is a widget. So how does it help us? So here is a page with some list and a title. On Android, this title would be set as a string. But in Flutter, because it's composable, this title is a widget. In this case, a uh, text widget. So how does it help us? So instead of having this the title, we can have a list. So even we can go here and start moving it. So this is composability in Flutter. So if almost everything is a widget, you can put almost everything almost everywhere. So this is one point. Another, I talked about those small parts. So here you see the list view. And when I'm scrolling, you will see a scroll bar on the side. In uh, normal Android recycler view, uh, this, this recycler view, which is a list, has a property scr scroll bar. And you can set it like that. It works, but the downside is it makes the recycler view bigger. In Flutter, there's another approach. So the scroll bar is a widget, and inside this widget, you can put the uh, list view. So something like this. OK, well, it's pretty small, but basically, you wrap the uh, list view with the scroll bar. And if you would access the scroll bar code, you will see it's really, really small. So again, it's com the Flutter is composable and created from small pieces. And I cannot say how much, it, uh, how important is it to have those uh, widgets small when you are writing those. Because uh, if you have been doing Flutter for a while, sorry, move the mouse, you will notice that sometimes you can have a big widget, a really big widget. And those are pretty annoying to maintain. So at some point it, it will end. <laughs> let, 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 uh, uh, let, let's see, maybe. No. OK, but by the way, it's a proper widget, so at the end it closes. So please don't do it like this. Uh, try in the beginning have your widget as small as possible, even sometimes too small. Because eventually you will know uh, the proper size of your widget. So that's, that's important. So this is all theory. Let's see some actual uh, stuff in practice. In my project, uh, we were developing this uh, dashboard in Flutter. And at some point, when we are done, our product team said, OK, it's, it looks nice, but it might be a bit too complicated for our users. So uh, let's explain them, uh, some of those parts. So let's create those tutorial pages that you see when you uh, start some applications that explain uh, you ha how to use it. So they wanted to focus on this part, the performance graph. So the idea is to create this kind of page. So there is this image of the graph and some description and a couple of those. And this is one of the uh, further iterations of the idea. Because uh, you can see those, uh, instead of text, you can see this gray uh, box there. There was reason to it. First of all, when they said, OK, let's implement it with text, we said, uh, wait a second. We, Flutter requires three densities. So they would require three images of those. OK, no problem for our designers. Wait a second. We support 11 languages. So that's 30 free images. OK. And they wanted four of those. So 33 times 4, 120, uh, 132 images. I don't know with what kind of designers you work with, but my designers, uh, 
they were too eager to provide us 132 images. <laughs> I, I don't know what. But, but we said, uh, developers, no, Flutter developers said, wait a second. Why do we need uh, to use an image? Everything, almost everything in Flutter is a widget. So what, uh, how did we implement it in the end? So this is the uh, idea that I wanted to have, the, the implementation. And we implemented this. So we implemented it as a widget. It gave us a couple of benefits. First of all, no additional images are required. So reduce size of the application. Next, uh, internationalization. It's built in because we already use these total vouchers here uh, in our application. So it's already translated. Next, if in future we would change this style, we wouldn't need to change the tutorial because it actually uses the same things. And the last thing that I like the most, but it's really subtle, let me repeat the uh, thing. There's an animation. So our tutorial will be live. So all the animations that are in our existing uh, Flutter widgets will be also in tutorial. So that was pretty nice. So this is about reusing widgets. But let's go a bit further. So I said that almost everything in Flutter is a widget. What about an application? Is an application a widget? Actually, it is. So it's a widget run in, uh, wrapped in run up method. And this gives us a pretty nice uh, uh, capabilities. So here you can see the tutorial I've told you about with animations, so here is not animation, here is the graph, I can swipe it around, got, got it, let's see if we have internet. So this is the application we've been working on. So basically, entire application is also a widget. So you can in the end embed application inside of application in Flutter. So you can have this kind, of, this sort of inception. Okay, give me a second. I <coughs> something. The, the logo should be blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Better. Uh, so probably also you've noticed. So uh, the inception thing. Probably you have noticed that the entire presentation is also made in Flutter. And this is my next suggestion. Make your presentations in Flutter. You might wonder, is that guy crazy? Does he have too much time? Does he, does he hate fun? Mm. <laughs> Before doing presentation in Flutter, I did it with uh, PowerPoint and Google Slides. The problem was, I, I was able to create decent animations, but I do presentations every other month. So, uh, not so often. So next time I need to create a new uh, presentation, I forgot how to do proper animations, and it's a bit frustrating. But it's not the worst. So at one conference, I was doing a presentation in uh, Google Slides after a, a guy who was doing a presentation about Bash in Bash, and he showed how amazing animations you can have in Bash. That was, that was really nice uh, presentation. So in the end, my presentation had worse animation than presentation in Bash. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was a pretty low moment for, for me. So yeah, I said, no, never again. So why should you, you uh, do it in uh, Flutter? First of all, you uh, Hopefully, you will be able to do Flutter on daily basis as your job. So you won't forget how to uh, write the Flutter code. Next thing is, in my project, uh, UI designers are more focused on UX and not so focused on how to create perfect animations. So I, uh, at my work, I cannot do so many animations. Thankfully, in, during presentations, it's important to have nice animations. 
Okay, I mean nicer animations. So I, I was able to improve my uh, animation writing skills in Flutter, and it was pretty nice. So that's why I would recommend you uh, doing some animation, uh, some Flutter <coughs> presentations. Okay, let's a bit more, a bit more, a bit, a bit more. Okay, by the way, you can see that uh, this is flatter because uh, like I didn't put it in uh, like list view or scroll view. Okay, this was about the <laughs> this was about the uh, presentation. Next thing, so probably if you have developed flatter for a while or uh, check it out, you you are probably familiar with this slide. So like flatter is kind of created from two parts: the framework uh, that has all the like material, Virginia widgets like uh, <coughs> elements, render objects, and so on, so on. And in that part, you can replace anything. Uh, you don't want to create, uh, use material widgets, you can use your own widgets. If you don't want to use widgets, use elements. If not elements, render objects, and so on, so on, so on. So you can replace everything. And the other part is the engine, which is on mobile and desktop written in C++ and uses Skia. Recently, they also announced that uh, th there is a version of Flutter in browser, so you can create web applications with Flutter. So this is you can reuse your Flutter knowledge even to create front-end applications. And uh, there was a possibility that my application wouldn't work, like there are always demo effects. So. I like, okay, let's have a backup, which might be pretty ugly, but still, it will be a backup. Come on. No. Okay, like this is the first screen. No. Okay, so I've compiled my application as a web application. So you can see like, uh, like solid stuff and so on. So you can reuse your skills also uh, so as a web developer. One funny thing is like when I was Today I noticed that the sponsor is Code Magic. So like uh, I'm using Code Magic CI to uh, build this thing, and it was by coincidence. Like I, I did it. Like nobody paid me for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, and Code Magic is pretty nice. It's straightforward to do uh, to create like build for iOS, Android, and web. Uh, at my project I don't use it because like we have a bit more sophisticated system, but still, if you want to try out building uh, web, dev uh, web pages with Flutter, go ahead with uh, Code Magic. <sighs> okay. Next, one of uh, my most passionate things about development, yeah. testing. <laughs> hmm. No, not laugh. Uh, by the way, testing in Flutter is amazing. So, uh, since like five years, I've been doing my UI in TDD way, and I really like it. And since uh, Flutter came in, I do TDD, uh, test driven development, with my UI. And it's still super fast and super nice. So if you don't know this, this is the uh, like uh, separation of how you can, uh, how different tests you can have. So unit tests, they, are, they, are, they have low confidence because they are pretty uh, small, but to maintain them, uh, it's not. It's really cheap because again they are slow and they are really fast to execute. Next, widget tests. My favorites uh, are a bit higher in confidence, but slower and like you need to maintain it a, a bit more. But last, the integration tests, which are the Flutter driver. So Flutter th those uh, usually run on emulator or simulator, they tap around, so you actually see what they are doing, but they are really slow. So uh, how could we improve it? So how can we focus on this slowness and make them like faster? So who's here like Android developer? Who's uh, done uh, uh, Espresso or Appium tests? They are always super stable on CI, always work perfectly, right? <laughs> uh, no. And this is because, uh, in my opinion, of the emulators. So how, how, how about like skipping emulators? So 
uh, basically, if we are able to create uh, desktop applications, we can, we can always also test them with Flutter driver and skipping the emulator overall. So like here, you can see, I'm on, uh, uh, I've run my, uh, my application, some of my application test drivers, tra te no, Flutter driver test. And they are way, way more fast and way more stable than actual running those on emulator on, or simulator. Still, the confidence is a bit lower because they don't interact with the native, like iOS Android code, but still, like, they can, in my opinion, test like 90% of the total functionality. Okay, next thing is why I, <laughs> who knows what's that? Jenkins, yeah, Jenkins, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not <laughs> By the way, I also really like, like that. So, why I would put so much effort to run uh, these tests as a desktop <coughs> application? Because uh, I didn't want to run emulators on my CI. Currently, <coughs> like all uh, my, uh, this is a, a build pipeline from one month ago, and everything here, building for Android, we are building it with Dockers, Docker images. So everything is in Docker. So I didn't really want to put the uh, emulator somewhere there. So if you can see like here, Flutter UI tests. So here we are actually on Docker image, building desktop Linux application and running it in a Docker. So no emulators needed and they are super stable. And here we're like in the beginning, like it ran like for two minutes, they were running like 25 tests. Now we have like 50 tests and two and a half minutes. So it's really, really nice to have this and we run it on every commit. So like I cannot say how much we like it. Okay, let's go a bit further. Who can recognize this thing except you? <laughs> Anybody? Does it ring a bell? Let you go ahead. Yeah. It's like from the agent? Uh, agent. What agent? The agent's agent. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, one of the first screens from Matrix. So, any, like anybody? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm a bit disappointed, but yeah. Uh, so, why do I want to talk about this? This is this is basically a console. Okay. Okay. Let let it, let it stop blinking. <laughs> uh, you want blinking? I can give you blinking again, but later. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, in your projects, you probably need to run, uh, write scripts. If you are lucky, uh, your team is working only on Linux uh, and or Macs, so you can need to only learn how to write uh, bash scripts. But in my team, we use uh, uh, every no people use uh, Windows, Mac. Uh, and uh, Linux. So in the end, we need to know how to write both batch and batch scripts. And we don't really, as developers, write those too often. So I, can, I cannot tell you how to filter a list of strings in batch or, or batch. I, I forget it. That's why I would recommend writing your uh, scripts in Dart. Because you can like run any Dart file set, uh, writing Dart and file name. And in our project, we have uh, writing, uh, doing screenshots written in uh, Dart, uh, fetching uh, translation, updating translation, and plan like running tests. Everything is written in Dart, and this is really useful because we uh, don't need to re uh, relearn every time how to write bash or bash scripts. So that's why I would also advise you to like write your scripts in Dart. Okay. Let's uh, and this is my last recommendation about re reusability. So like who knows the first one? What is it called? No. Who has Yeah? Okay, who has heard about Jetpack Compose? Okay, so Jetpack Compose, like Swift UI, are both declarative ways to create uh, UIs. And if you would look at them, they are really, really similar to uh, Flutter. Also, Jetpack Compose has some comments that 
uh, somebody forgets to change Dart to Kotlin. So, uh, <laughs> they, they, they might have copied some stuff. But uh, I have some friends, Android's friends, that are really good developers, but for one or another reasons are not fond of Flutter. And they've tweeted, uh, tweeted that, okay, uh, Flutter developers should be now worried because the Jetpack Compose will, will take you, no, like, will make you obsolete. I disagree. I really love Jetpack Compose and the Swift UI. Because currently there are some developers that don't want to touch Flutter, they want to uh, focus on iOS or Android solely. But this means that they will try it out. Ah, this thing, uh, this stuff looks nice uh, and really nice to write. Hmm. And at that point we can say like, hey, by the way, Flut Flutter compiles much faster than Jetpack Compose and it's available now, whereas Swift UI is only available on iOS 13. So, uh, like maybe in four years, everybody will have it. So, that's a problem. And the last thing that I really like about uh, both of them is because uh, the creators of uh, those frameworks probably don't want to say that they are fan of Flutter. So they cannot say it out loud. But imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So we know that they really like it, so like, yeah. I'm also pretty happy about it. Okay, so that was my last slide. So I hope you enjoy it. And if you have any questions, you can ask them in Polish as well. Thank you.